Hey everyone, Stephen Feuerstein here with another PL SQL quick tip, this time on using the values of clause with for all and sparse arrays. In this block of code, I'm using the for all statement to make changes to the employees table, setting a number of employees to a salary of $10,000. So let's take it from the top. First of all, I declare an array, an associative array of employee IDs indexed by integer and declare a variable based on that type. Then I declare a second type, my values associative array type. It's a table of integers indexed by integer, my employee values. That's the array I'm going to use with my values of syntax. Now, then I populate my employees list with four different elements. Notice the index values are all over the place, minus 77, 13, 0, 6, 7, et cetera, et cetera. It's one of the advantages of associative arrays. You do not have to populate your collection sequentially. It's clearly sparse. So if I try to execute for all from one to the count of employees, I'll get an error. It will not work. To use that first to last or one to count syntax with my bind array, it has to be densely filled. So I need to use something else. And in this case, I'm going to use values of because I have a very complex situation in which the rules by which I determine which rows to be updated are deposited into a different collection, my employee values collection. And in this case, the value in each element in that collection, minus 77, 13067, 1070, are the index values in the bind array that I want to update. So in the case of the values of clause, the index values in my values of array, 100, 200, 300, are of no importance. The collection doesn't have to be densely filled. The actual values don't matter. What matters is the value of the elements in those index values. So in my for all statement, I simply say in values of, and then the array with my the name of my values array, my DML statement. And then what happens at runtime is that it goes through all the elements in that values array, goes to the element in each of those index values, minus 77, 13067, 1070, and it executes an update just for those three, skipping anything else that's not in the list. Let's take a look at the impact. So first, let's see how many employees are currently making $10,000. Four, just four employees. Now I'm going to run this script. And I'm going to see, notice, it tells me that three employees were updated. That's my SQL percent row count. And then if I run my query again, lo and behold, I now have seven people earning a $10,000 salary as opposed to the four before. So that's what you get with values of. When the bind array is not sequentially filled from one to count or first to last, you can choose to use indices of or values of. Indices of is the more common application in this scenario, but values of comes in extremely handy when you happen to have an array or want to build an array in which the element values of your indexing array contain the index values of your bind array. Yes, it sounds kind of confusing. I encourage you to download the scripts that come in my demo zip file Try it out for yourself. Get your head well around how the values of syntax works. And now for a few takeaways. So you can only use the standard or traditional syntax of for all index, low to high, one to count, etc., only if your bind arrays are densely filled, every element filled between first and last. If your bind array has gaps, then you must either densify the array, get rid of the gaps, or use either indices of or values of. With values of, the values in another array, the indexing array, contain the index values used in the bind array. Now the use cases for values of is less common than that which you will find with indices of, but it's still good to have available. Resources. Check out my related video using for all with indices of and sparse arrays. And if you're not that familiar yet with for all altogether, check out my, introdu my introduction video, and then check out the 10G values of files that you'll find in my demo zip available at the PLSQL Learning Library, oracle.com slash OLL slash PLSQL. Click on demo zip, 
download that zip file, check out the files referenced here, and of course, explore the other files for use in educating yourself further about PLSQL. I hope this was useful, and I hope that you get the most out of 4 all with sparse or dense arrays and happy PLSQL coding.